A gunfight in Heflin Saturday sends one to the hospital with non-life-threatening wounds. The last bit of showers and thunderstorms moving across East Alabama this evening. Then some drier weather in store. We'll have the complete forecast details for all of East Alabama next. Coming up in sports, we have the full recap from the North and South Super Sectionals in Wrestling. Also, some basketball teams saw their season come to an end, while others advanced to regionals. We have all the results right now. EA and Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. Mike Stedham has the evening off. First this evening, Heflin police say eyewitnesses report that a man who was injured in a gunfight in Heflin Saturday was fired upon by someone acting in self-defense. Heflin Police Chief Ross McClown said an altercation broke out in the parking lot of New Zion Baptist Church in the 6 p.m. hour on Saturday. One person was injured by the gunfire before being treated and released at Northeast Alabama Regional Medical Center in Anniston, McClown said in a phone interview today. Both shooters were identified by police, but no arrests were made in the case. Following the incident, eyewitnesses remained on the scene until authorities arrived. According to those first-person accounts, McClown says the injured man fired first and was hit after the second shooter returned fire in self-defense. McClown says that an investigation into the incident continued Monday and added that charges could still be pending. Since 1993, WM Grocery has been a major part of our local community. WM offers the very best in fresh produce and an outstanding meat department. WM also has many local products not found anywhere else and fresh sushi every day. If you need an event catered, come see Mrs. K at any WM store. Curbside pickup is also available for your online grocery orders. Be sure to download the WM app for all the deals of the week and shopper rewards. Go check them out today at any of their locations. We take pride in our community and appreciate your business. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Beginning tonight, officials are limiting access to Chimney Peak in Jacksonville. Jacksonville Police announced this weekend on its Facebook page that they, along with Jacksonville State University, will work together to keep the popular access point closed between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. The announcement comes just days after someone tore down a separate gate at the top of the peak. That gate, which is fortified by locks and barbed wire, protects government towers at the top of the hill. Jacksonville State University Police Chief Michael Barton said Friday in an email that there is no evidence that anything beyond the gate was damaged. Barton says that the University Police Department is investigating the damage and would like members of the public to report any tips regarding the incident. The nighttime closure will be enforced with an electronic gate and police camera located at the base of the popular access point. Officials installed the mechanisms for the closure and announced plans to keep the site shut off from visitors at night last August, but did not say at that time when it would be enforcing the closure. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Free health guidance is available each month at the Lucille L. Morgan Public Library. Dr. Anita Lee from Oxford will be on hand for a free one-hour session each month at the library. This month, the official focus is on heart health, but in March, the focus will change to address a seasonal concern, sinuses. Next month in March, um, you can watch for the date. We don't have a specific date yet, but she's focusing on sinuses, which we're gonna obviously be getting into sinus season. So, um, but she's awesome. She, um, Anita will come um, 
and just have like an hour class for us. But it's not too late to take care of this month's heart health focus. On Thursday between 10 a.m. and 11, patrons can swing by to have their blood pressure checked. And that goes along with this being heart month and focusing on our heart. And there are a lot of people that maybe they don't have the means to get somewhere or to travel somewhere to have their blood pressure checked, but they realize that something's going on. So we're just going to have a nurse or two come in and just offer um, free blood pressure. Well, it was a dreary, overcast, rainy day in East Alabama today. John Holder joins us now in the EAN Weather Center to tell us what we can expect the rest of the week. John? Katie, the rest of the work week is going to be dry across East Alabama. We'll have a forecast that most folks are going to like. Coming up next. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. Lots of clouds, rainfall, even a little bit of thunder and lightning out there across East Alabama today. But even with all the clouds and rain in place, temperatures still about five degrees above the average today, 63 for the high after a morning low this morning of only 59. Basically, the temperatures just didn't move very much today at all. The record high temperature 75, the record low temperature at 12 degrees. And look at the sunrise and sunset times now. Days continuing to get longer as we head towards spring time sun rising tomorrow now at 6 30 and look at that sun setting not until 5 25 this evening weather on your street on a monday night let's go to sunset place on the east side of anniston the rain will be ending that's key the winds will be picking up we'll see winds tonight gusting as high as 30 miles per hour switching around from the south to the north that's going to bring some colder air and you'll feel that tomorrow morning 36 for the low again that's still about where we should be for this time of year coming up tomorrow we'll bring sunshine back into the forecast on goodyear avenue in east gadsden in etowah county but it's going to be much cooler tomorrow about 10 degrees cooler than today and a little bit below average for this time of year with the high tomorrow at 53 degrees our cool night or cold night if you will that's going to be coming up tomorrow night and then the rest of the week we're going to be looking at basically some very fine weather coming up high temperatures will be in the 60s we'll have sunshine a few clouds in the forecast on snow street in downtown oxford but we don't see any rainfall coming until probably late Friday night, if not holding off until the day on Saturday. So again, temperatures remaining above normal, well above normal, 5 to 10 degrees above normal for the rest of the work week after tomorrow. Here's the seven day forecast for all of East Alabama. Again, no chance of rain in the forecast all the way through the end of the work week. And look at those temperatures again. Cool day tomorrow. We can handle that. Then we're back into the mid 60s, upper 60s by Thursday, mid 60s again on Friday. Nighttime lows, we mentioned the cool morning coming up will be Wednesday morning at 32. But then we're getting back into the 40s again. We'll have some rainfall coming for the weekend. This does not look like a big rain event coming, but about a 40% chance of showers coming up during the day on Saturday. Temperatures will be seasonal for the weekend and again for the early part of next week. But again, we do not see any kind of bitterly cold air coming for the next 7 to 10 days, taking us all the way past about the 20th of February as springtime is just right around the corner. Let's take a look at all the rainfall we received. And folks, we had a lot of rain, especially down to our south. Some of the folks in the Auburn Opelika area getting down around Montgomery of the I-85 corridor. Look at some of those rainfall totals, two and a half to almost five inches of rain here in East Alabama. We saw plenty of rainfall. This ended at 7 o'clock this morning. This is the 24-hour period that we had between 7 o'clock in the morning on uh, Saturday morning to our, should say, Sunday morning to 7 o'clock this morning. And you'll see there rainfall totals about a half an inch to two inches or one and a half inches to about two inches across most of East Alabama. 
about an inch and a half in Gadsden. You see almost two inches over in Heflin. Again, about an inch and a quarter or so. That was a big rainfall total, about one and a third of an inch at the Anniston Airport. So again, some beneficial rainfall to knock out that drought situation across East Alabama. I'll be back here tomorrow morning. We'll take you through your Tuesday with your day at a glance early tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And then I'll be right back here tomorrow evening as we'll detail the forecast on EAN Local News for the rest of the work week here tomorrow evening. Right now, sports time, wrestling, high school wrestling, a big story. Namath Pitts returns this week. He has it for you next. Namath. Thanks, John. More hardware was added this weekend for local teams and wrestlers in East Alabama. We had teams spread out in Birmingham and Montgomery. We have all the results from this past weekend. We will start in Class 1A through 4A, where a local Calhoun County team took first place overall. Weaver did not just win the AHSA 1A through 4A North Sectionals Championship, but they dominated. Weaver is seeking to win their third straight state tradition championship this weekend when they compete at the state tournament. Weaver finished this past weekend with 258 points, which was 51 points better than second place finisher Corner. Weaver had 13 out of 14 wrestlers that qualified for the state tournament that is this weekend in Huntsville at the Von Braun Center. Kale Fulmer finished second place, Hayden Heiss finished first, Gianluca Torres finished second, Brandon Jolla finished second, Zachary Hooks finished fourth, Hunter Heiss finished fourth, Christopher Thornton finished fourth, Caden Thornton finished third, Deshaun Kirby Barnes finished sixth, Dylan Brown finished fourth, Gabriel Snyder finished sixth, Dalton Fink finished third, and Peyton Andrews finished third as they all advanced to the state tournament. Other teams in Calhoun County competed in Birmingham and Montgomery and had good showings. But in the north section in Class 1A through 4A, the Piedmont Bulldogs qualified seven wrestlers for the state tournament. Dalton Chandler finished sixth, Elijah Young finished fifth, Caleb Tidwell finished fourth, Hunter Bagley finished sixth, Isaac Bailey finished fifth, Hendrix Keener finished sixth, and Miles Bailey finished third. White Plains had five wrestlers qualified for the state tournament as Mason Hom finished second, Houston Gerald finished sixth, James Hurd finished fifth, Wesley Beebe finished third, and Tanner Gerald finished fourth. Pleasant Valley, the Raiders had two wrestlers qualified for the state tournament. Connor Crump finished fourth, and Baron House finished third. Ohatchee had three wrestlers qualified for the state tournament. James Howard finished fifth, Jackson Tuiela finished sixth, and Phoenix Tuiela finished fifth. In Class 5A, Alexandria qualified seven wrestlers for the state tournament. Preston Jones finished first, and Caden DeLine finished first. Jeremy Lambert finished third. Dakota Ball finished fourth. Corey Owens finished fourth. Tristan Page finished fourth. And Amoria Green finished fourth. Alexandria finished fourth place overall as a team. In Class 6A, Oxford had four wrestlers qualified for the state tournament. Caleb Tiener finished first place. Carlise Hubbard finished third, Tristan Williams finished sixth, and Jeremiah Edwards finished sixth as they all advanced to the state tournament. Montgomery featured four East Alabama teams who all qualified wrestlers for the state tournament. Cleburne County finished fifth overall as a team. Alston Mayfield finished first place, Will Johnson finished third, Braden Beam finished fourth, Colton Mayfield finished fourth, Jackson Letson finished fifth, and Jacob Biggers finished fourth. The Rambert Bulldogs qualified five wrestlers for the state tournament. I apologize, we do not have a picture that was received by the school. But Carter Driver finished first place. Zach Buchanan finished first place. Zayden Benefield finished second place. Braden Driver finished fifth place. And Hunter Holsey finished third. Welburn, the Panthers qualified five wrestlers for the state tournament. Andrew Salter finished fifth place. Ethan Carroll finished fifth place. Caden King finished third. Noah Screws finished fourth, and Noah Smith finished sixth. For the Sox Wildcats, they had only one wrestler who qualified for the state tournament, and it was John Bussey who finished second place. Sub-regional basketball took place this past weekend, with East Alabama teams looking to make an appearance at Jacksonville State University. But unfortunately, there were many teams here in East Alabama who saw their season come to an end. Here are the teams who saw their season end this past weekend. Let's start with Pleasant Valley. Deja vu for the Pleasant Valley Raiders. After winning their second straight area championship, they were bounced out in the sub-regional round. 
The bison of North Sand Mountain was too much for Brad Hood and the Pleasant Valley Raiders. Pleasant Valley season came to an end as North Sand Mountain came out on top 59-31. to The Section Lions are playing their best basketball of the season. In their area tournament, Section upset its top or upset its second seeded Pisgah and then beat top seeded North Sand Mountain. The Lions would continue their hot shooting and be too much for the Ramburn Bulldogs as Section won 59 to 38. The Weaver Bearcats have not made a regional appearance at Jacksonville State University in over 10 years. That streak continued after Bo Wynn and the Weaver Bearcats came up short in overtime at Susan Moore. Weaver had an up and down season that saw them at their best towards the end, but Susan Moore was just a little bit better as they ended the Bearcats season with a 51-49 win. It was a sour ending for White Plains and a group that will be remembered for a very long time. Chris Randall had eight seniors who contributed a lot to his program, and that sour taste would come from a school named New Hope. White Plains saw three of their seniors, Josh Wheeler, Daniel Williams, and Carter Johnson, each score in double figures, with Wheeler and Johnson scoring 14 points and Daniel Williams adding 11 points. But it would not be enough as White Plains season comes to an end with a 59-48 home loss in sub-regionals. Things seemed to be bright for the Jacksville Golden Eagles last month when they won the Calhoun County Championship. But things down the stretch went the exact opposite. Jacksville struggled down the stretch. They lost in the area championship and they followed that up with a loss to DAR in the sub-regionals. Aaron Nixon scored 20 points for the Golden Eagles and was their leading scorer. Kedrick Fisher scored 12 points and Jaquan Irvin had 9, but DAR ended Jacksonville's season with a 61-53 win. Gunnersville had a strong showing from Trayvon Avery, C.J. Scott, and Oakley Howell as they led Gunnersville past Alexandria. Coach Ginn's team celebrated an area championship, a Final Four appearance in the county tournament, and celebrated senior Drake Davis but ultimately their season came to an end to Gunnersville as the Wildcats won 79 to 73. Joel Van Minter's team got hot at the right time at the area tournament as they upset Gaston City and Fort Payne to win the area tournament. But then Oxford got cold at the wrong time. Oxford's season came to an end at home against Huffman as Timothy Austin, Ryan Gibson, and Peyton Wiggins combined to score all 17 of Huffman's points in the fourth quarter, which ultimately helped them propel past Oxford. Jaden Lewis led the Yellow Jackets with 12 points, while Jalen Alexander scored 11, but Huffman ends Oxford's season with a 50-39 win. In girl action, Ramburn got the opportunity to host the area tournament, but they lost in the championship, and then it was a rough trip to Eider, as the Hornets swarmed and dominated Ramburn 69 to 30. The Bulldogs season comes to an end as Eider moves on to Jacksonville State University for a regional appearance. Jamie Burns team upset Welburn to make the area championship game and clinch a sub-regional appearance. They took the court with a tough task, which was they were gonna try to beat the sixth ranked team in the state, Susan Moore. Aaliyah Marks led Weaver with 12 points. DJ Gibbs scored seven points. But sophomore Laney Smallwood would lead Susan Moore with 25 points. Miley Butler finished with 15 points as Susan Moore ended Weaver's season with a dominant 76-30 victory. Corey Mize and the Jacksville Golden Eagles have absolutely nothing to hang their heads about. It was a great season that ended like many other teams to New Hope. Despite 12 points apiece from Laney Lozano and Alexis Phillips, Jacksville girls saw their season come to an end with a 64-42 sub-regional loss to New Hope. Jacksville finished the season at 14-14 as they were the Class 4A Area 10 runner-up. New Hope advanced to the JSU uh, Jacksonville State University for regionals as they defeat Jacksonville 64-42. Scottsboro and Alexandria had one thing in common. It was an underclassman loaded roster. The Scottsboro Wildcat roster had no seniors, two juniors, six sophomores, and two freshmen which have led them to an appearance at regionals. Scottsboro knocked off state champion Gunnersville, state runner-up ARAB in the area tournament, and then proceeded to eliminate Craig Kiker and the Alexandria Valley Cubs. Alyssa Hunt had a great season for the Valley Cubs, but her senior season came to an end as Scottsboro won 64 to 20. 
Unfortunately, many teams did see their season come to an end, but six East Alabama teams saw their season advance to regional play, which will now be at Jacksonville State University's Pete Matthews Coliseum. So here is the good news. Here are the winners from this past weekend who kept their season alive. Many debated who would be the last team standing between Aniston White Plains and Jacksonville, but it was the Aniston Bulldogs who advanced to regionals and not the others. Isaiah Allen and Devin Coleman led the way for Aniston by scoring 15 points apiece. Kyron Brown scored six points as Aniston beat Etowah in advance to Jacksonville State University where they will play DAR. Aniston beat Etowah 51 to 46. Aniston girls did not make it to regionals last season, but that is not the case for this season. Tykeria Smith led the way for Aniston with 17 points. Akela Perry added 15 points. Serena Hardy scored 14. And Layla Tyus finished with 10 points as Aniston dominated Etowah from start to finish. Aniston advanced to Jacksonville State University where they will play New Hope as Aniston dominated Etowah 66-16. The expectations for Piedmont boys were high last year when Piedmont had Alex Odom, Raleigh Pinto, and Ishmael Bethel. Well, Odom graduated is now playing for Jacksonville State University. Pinto has been out all season long after tearing his ACL, and Bethel suffered a shoulder injury late this season. Yet Matt Glover and the Piedmont Bulldogs still found a way to reach regionals. Colton Proctor was the leading scorer for Piedmont with 16 points. Taylor Swain scored 12 points. Jalen Brown scored 11. And Chance Murphy added 9 points as Piedmont beat Vinemont. Piedmont advances to Jacksonville State University where they will play Geraldine, and they did that by beating Vinemont 56-43. For Faith Christian, Corey Hughes is coaching his final season at Faith Christian, and he has led the Lions back to regionals at Jacksonville State University. Carson Harris hit seven three-pointers on the way to what would be a game-high 29 points. The other top performer for the Lions was Connor Richards Hagen, who scored 13 points. Faith Christian will play Skyline this Wednesday at Jacksonville State University, and Faith Christian got there by beating Galesville 59-29. For the Bulldogs of Piedmont, the ladies, the Lady Piedmont Bulldogs have been on fire all season long under Coach Shane Morrow, and they have earned their spot in the AHSA Northeast Regional Basketball Tournament after beating J.B. Pennington 56-38. Piedmont is set to make their first Northeast Regional appearance since 2013. To put that in perspective, I'm 23. I was 13 last time Piedmont made the regional. Piedmont was led by Ava Pope's 23 points and Caleb Brothers' 13 points as Piedmont beat J.B. Pennington 56-38. And then Melissa Bennett and the Oxford Yellow Jackets. Zayana Whitfield scored a game-high 25 points. Jamia Gaston added 20 and 7 assists as Oxford defeated Gardendale 79-52 in a sub-regional home game. The win over Gardendale puts Oxford in the Northeast Regional for the fourth straight year. The Yellow Jackets will play this Friday at Jacksonville State against Shades Valley. Melissa Bennett's team got there after a dominating win over Gardendale, 79 to 52. It felt good to be back, and that's it for EA and Local Sports. Let's go back over to Katie. Thanks for the update, Namath, and thank you for watching today. Join us tomorrow to hear from J.C. Mayo, a JSU graduate student who spent Monday traveling back from Las Vegas after performing in the Super Bowl halftime show. And don't forget, you can find us here online every weekday on YouTube, Instagram, and our website. So you can go there to watch our news, sports, and weather content whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Tuesday for your news on your schedule.